We got some secret information on what comps are dominating the ladder, and we're here to tell you all about it while ranking every spec on a massive tier list. Anyway, if you're watching this video, it's because you want to be cutting edge. You have your eyes on the things that really matter in life. Gladiator titles, baby. We're here to help you out. In collaboration with BlizzCon champions and players with stupid amounts of rank 1 titles, we created brand new courses at skillcap.com that instantly get you ahead of the competition, teaching you how to deal rank 1 level damage and healing for every spec. You can also learn cutting edge strategies in our massive library of arena commentaries, where a rank one player will guide you step by step through your toughest matchups. Skillcap.com is the only place that promises you will gain 400 rating or your money back. That is a huge promise, but we know from over 10 years of experience that we can deliver. So to get started with the best guides and the number one UI for PvP, check out the exclusive discount links below. Anyway, back to the video. Competition is incredibly stacked in the S tier this season, and what do you know, we have a rogue spec coming out on top. Subtlety has retained its classic setup heavy playstyle and now has some amazing sustained damage sprinkled in. Right now this spec is just super well optimized for playing with any high tier wizard, typically affliction warlocks and frost mages, enabling them to actually land their casts thanks to the lockdown of shadow dance. Thug Cleave is a good option too, once again playing off the strength of setups. Both RLP and RMP were pretty popular in the recent AWC since they offer the perfect mix of offensive pressure and defensive stability, and if you're a serious arena player, these are your best options to climb the ladder. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the past month, you already know that Feral Druid is a heavy hitter, especially in 3v3. Feral is another big winner in any meta where cleaving is strong, since with the King of the Jungle PvP talent, they receive up to 20% bonus healing as long as dots are spread across four targets. Ferals do take a lot of damage, so this really helps. Right now, the two best Feral Druid comps are Jungle Cleave, which really shouldn't be a surprise, and then FMP, which recently won the North American AWC, beating out Lock Rogue in the Grand finals. After recent buffs, Frost Mage is the best caster in 3v3. Of course, you already know that RMP is top dog, but once again, don't sleep on FMP. Both these comps have a proven track record of being highly competitive on the ladder and in tournaments. Now, if you are really itching to play Wizard Cleave, then an Affliction Warlock is your best bet. You're going to have lots of control, and as we just mentioned, you're able to at least provide some stun coverage for your Warlock, giving you the ability to microburst as a team. Now, I know you hate when we do this, but we need an a tier to separate the good from the great. First up in this tier is Affliction Warlock, who we already mentioned a few times so far, and for good reason. Aflock is a dual threat these days, having a mix of AoE spread pressure and surprisingly good single target burst with Shadow Bolt and Haunt. This gives them a ton of flexibility in comp selection. But in order to actually make use out of their amazing damage kit, Warlocks really need some stuns, which ideally means playing with a rogue, but Shadow Priests, Frost Mages, and Feral Druids can also fill that void, while also meshing well with their own damage profiles. After some huge buffs recently, Shadow Priest has skyrocketed in the rankings. Luckily for Shadow Priests, Rogue Warlocks and Frost Mage are ultra viable in the meta, which means having several iconic comps to choose from. Rogue SP and Shadow Play will both be your best options. Playing with a Rogue will give you more opportunities to do damage in setups, whereas an Affliction Warlock will of course mean parsing the scoreboard like it's a Mythic Plus dungeon. If the meta slows down, we definitely could see Shadow rise. The last spec to barely miss the S tier is Mark's Hunter. Don't be fooled, this spec is definitely a threat, especially into any double caster team, where it's able to evaporate an HP bar in the the blink of an eye. Jungle Cleave is definitely going to be your best overall comp, super well optimized to select one target and then blast it down all game while throwing out traps on CD. While Hunters saw some defensive nerfs, they're still highly competitive. BM was hit with some additional damage nerfs, but is still holding up. Oddly enough, BM plays sort of like a melee DPS of all things, staying close to enemy targets in order to maximize damage with stomp and kill command. As we've mentioned several times in our tier list this expansion, BM is a pure single target dot spec, getting massive damage amplifiers when training one enemy player all game. Because of this, BM works well with any consistent damage spec like Feral Druids, and even has damage synergy with Unholy DKs and Elemental Shamans of all things. Assassination Rogue is definitely up there too, sacrificing some control for huge AoE damage. In any fast paced meta where there are lots of pets to cleave, Asa does super well, with talents like Indiscriminate Carnage allowing them to easily spread dots and send to blood to give a huge agility buff based on the number of targets dotted. 
because this asset can fit into the same comps as sub, but can even play a blender style comp. Pairing up with an unholy death knight to live fast and die young, doing huge AoE damage to execution test even the most experienced healers. Now that we've covered all of our meta giants, let's move on to the rest of the high tiers. After some recent nerfs, Unholy has taken a noticeable hit in the 3v3 meta. Ironically, Unholy is a relatively weak spec into some of the other high tiers, having difficult matchups against rogues and feral druids, but being relatively strong into the rest of the cast, having high damage and being extremely disruptive. Unholy works well with a wide variety of specs, but will likely see the most success with a BM or Marks Hunter, Assassination Rogue, or even an Affliction Warlock for some classic Shadow Cleave. While it might be a banger in Solo Shuffle, Devastation falls off slightly in Constructed 3s. For another season in a row, your best bet is Double Dragon. Playing with a Preservation Evoker and then adding a high tier melee to the mix, it's a reliable formula that simply works. Seems a bit weird, we know, but Evokers have amazing synergy together, being able to rescue each other, reset hovers with Time Spiral, a pressing roar for setups, double purge, you name it. Devastation pairs best with either a rogue or feral druid since your goal is to land casts, and these two specs play the perfect support role. Up next is Fury Warrior, who at one point was a contender for S tier DPS, but after repeated nerfs has fallen off slightly. Right now, Fury is simply outclassed by the other high tier melee. While feral druids and sub rogues have no problem enabling their meta casters, Fury can feel a bit clunky with its objectively worse lockdown. With that said, Warrior does work surprisingly well with an Ellie Shaman since Stormbolt will Will always line up with Primordial Wave, and altogether, Ellie Shamans really help complement Warriors in ways other casters can't. Between Static Field, Roots, Snares, and so on, Ellie does a really good job at ensuring the Warrior can have uptime. Another spec that seems a bit outpaced right now is Arms Warrior. Just like some of the other A tiers on this list, Arms typically does best in a slightly slower meta where games can reliably be won through attrition. And right now, Warriors seem to take way too much damage without much of a chance to fight back. Right now, playing with an Ellie Shaman is likely your best bet, but if you want to play something a bit more cleavy, then Kitty Cleave is likely your best option, though TSG could work too. And speaking of which, Ellie is another high tier DPS in this meta having a wide variety of comp options, including the very obscure Ellie Shaman BM Hunter. Do we call this Beast Cleave 2.0? We're not sure. Anyway, as we mentioned just a second ago, Ellie really doesn't need the same lockdown as other casters, but can certainly benefit from it, which is why pairing with a Fury Warrior or Asa Rogue is a good pick. If you want to play some caster cleave comps, Ellie Boomkin is an appealing option. This is a comp that we saw in the AWC with high burst damage and great survival ability thanks to hybrid support. Your win condition here is going to be winning with Incarn and then stalling out the game in between. Now though, it's time to dip into the mid-tiers where we have some specs right on the cusp of greatness. Moving on to the recently buffed Demon Hunters, one of your best comps is going to be Boomy DH, but you do have some other options too. Unfortunately, Demon Hunters lost a bit of passive synergy with casters after the removal of Chaotic Imprint and the nerf to Chaos Brand, but we expect that they can bounce back with even more damage buffs. DH is a spec that relies heavily on tempo, and right now it's simply outpaced by Sub Rogues and Feral Druids. Destruction Warlock is another spec that could gradually climb our tier list over time. Again, the main problem right now is that the meta is a bit too fast. Destro is one of those specs that likes to push in and press W at the enemy team all day, which is kind of an issue right now considering how much damage Warlocks take. You're definitely going to want some sort of healing reduction effect on your team when playing Destro. Assassination Rogue is an obvious pick here, but we could see Feral being a good substitute as well. Next up is Demonology Warlock, whose stocks have risen after some recent buffs, but don't get too excited yet. The fundamental problem with Demonology is this thing called the cast bar, and needing to have it open all game. One workaround to this problem is to pair with a high tier wizard like a frost mage or even a shadow priest, giving you a bit more leeway in being able to do meaningful damage. Hey, at least if you can't land casts, it means your partners can, right? Balanced Druid is in a bit of a weird place. It is a bit too slow for the current meta and really needs some support with CC to avoid getting trained all game, which means playing with a rogue or even another wizard. With that said, you still have the option of playing Boomy DH. We could see this comp become quite good again with more DH buffs and for the third time in a row when the meta slows down. Moving on, we have Outlaw Rogue, which is definitely the weakest out of all three specs. Outlaw doesn't feel too bad, but it doesn't feel too great either. It lacks the consistency of sub and the raw throughput of assassination, leaving it somewhere in this awkward middle ground where it doesn't really provide anything too valuable. Your best option is, of course, Rogue Mage, with Frost and Arcane both being good options. Rounding out the B tier is Survival Hunter, which just like Outlaw Rogue is good, but probably the weakest spec for the entire class. Luckily for all of you Hunter mains, your best comp doesn't really 
really change no matter what buttons are on your action bar. Just find a good feral druid to stun the kill target while you stun trap the healer on CD and you have the winning strategy that hasn't changed at all for over a decade. The final spec to round out the A tier is Windwalker Monk, who's had a bit of a redesign this expansion, acting more like a micro CC brawler more than anything else. The main problem with Windwalker Monk this expansion is that they can lack finishing power. Sure, they might be tanky with great consistent damage, but closing out games can be an issue. Because of this, you'll want to pair with a big bursty spec, something like a sub rogue or even a hunter. On paper, you definitely could play with a Frost Mage or even an Affliction Warlock too, so definitely feel free to experiment. With our high tier hopefuls covered, we need to take a small detour and cover our mid and low tier specs. First up is Rhett Paladin, which is a spec that on paper should be super strong with the popularity of rogues and such, but is exceptionally weak right now into over half of the meta, struggling into warlocks and mages. Rhett also faces some struggles in its ability to close out games. It's one of those specs that can do really great scoreboard damage, but doesn't quite pack the punch needed to score the win, even with wings. Right now, your best overall comp is going to be some Cupid Cleave, allowing you to win with setups rather than damage alone. Another melee hybrid to miss the mid-tiers is Enhancement Shaman. You might have seen the recent tournament success of Saul, who managed to score some wins with both a Windwalker Monk and a Warrior, with their team having the fitting name of F-Tier. Now, we don't think Enhance is that bad, but again, right now is that the spec, along with all of its friends, are simply outclassed. Enhance is more or less a support spec and really needs Warrior to be ultra good in order to be super competitive. Of course, Turbo Cleave will be your stable comp, but if you want to experiment a bit, then Sub Rogue or even Windwalker Monk can make decent substitutes. Rounding out the low tiers, we have our remaining two mage specs, Arcane and Fire, which are significantly more punishing to play in the meta. Even though you might have seen Arcane do well in the recent AWC, just know that this comp could have done equally well, if not better, as Frost, and it's more of a testament to how good Cubsy is rather than how good Arcane is. Luckily, every mage spec basically follows the same formula. Just find yourself a good rogue or feral druid and then match up with a disc priest. It's quite rare that we ever resort to a D tier, but there are two specs in the game which feel significantly further behind. Frost DK definitely fits this description, still feeling a bit limited by its 45 second downtime. Right now, Unholy DK can basically do everything Frost can, but even better and with a bit less effort. If you're a fan of Frost God Zeke, he gave us the inside scoop that Frost DK Dev Evoker is still pretty solid, but TSG and Walking Dead can even work too. Augmentation Evoker is our final DPS, and yet another spec that has fallen behind, with its best button being on the talent pane with the ability to simply swap over to Devastation. Anyway, just like Dev, your best comp is going to be with a Feral Druid and another Dragon. And if you're curious what the healer meta is looking like, let's quickly break things down. After their recent buffs, Holy Paladins have shot up the rankings to pass both Disc Priest and Preservation Evoker. While this might seem like a hot take, Resto Druid might be one of the weakest healers in the current meta. Resto Druids are like the jazz of WoW PvP, good when things are going slow and when you have time to relax, which just isn't the case right now. The pace of the game needs to slow down a bit for Druids to be high tier again. If you're wanting to get started and rank up fast on any of the classes we covered today, check out our brand new website at skillcap.com. Our class guides are designed to get you ahead by teaching fundamentals that actually carry in Arena. And with brand new Arena commentaries every week, you can gain an inside look into the strategies being used at the highest level of gameplay. It doesn't matter where you start or what your goals are this season, Skillcapped is designed to get you ahead of the competition fast. So to get started with everything you need in the new expansion, be sure to check out the exclusive offer below and learn how you can gain 400 rating risk-free. For now though, that's going to be it for us. See you soon and good luck in the new season.